You know what, this hearing is actually the best example of what waste, fraud, and abuse looks like because the only reason we're having this hearing is because somebody got their feelings hurt in a debate and I don't understand why we're wasting taxpayer dollars. Next time, tell your big boy to show up and be ready to handle the woman in the room who hopefully will become the next president of the United States. Nevertheless, while we do have two amazing authors from Project 2025, which it seems like everybody got the memo, like, yes, I'm going to double down and say it's my thing, but I'm going to make sure I also say that it ain't our homeboys thing because we know that it doesn't poll very well with the American people because the American people are woke enough to recognize that there is nothing good in it for them. So with that being said, Ms. Perryman, I'm just curious, and this is yes or no, is Trump's name ever mentioned in Project 2025? Yes or no? Um, Just yes or no? I got you. <laughs> um, I got you. In, within the document itself, yes. um, there are a number of references to the former okay. administration. So is Trump's name mentioned just one time? Uh, I believe it's mentioned more. Okay. Five times. I haven't counted. Oh, oh okay. Well, uh, if I told you that his name is mentioned approximately 312 times, would you have any reason to dispute that? Um, I don't have any reason. Okay, thank you very much. So it's interesting that we want to try to pretend. We're not going to pretend in here. We're going to work with facts and not fiction. Yo, when Jasmine Crockett gets the mic, whatever right wing sham is on the docket at the moment goes down the drain. So here's the bottom line. Absent major reforms. Vice President Harris's $42 billion program is wired to fail. It's time to correct course. Get rid of all the extraneous political goals and focus on quickly connecting Americans. And I'm actually going to talk about Texas because I believe that the testimony has been somewhere around uh, the fact that no money has actually been disputed as it relates to rural broadband. Um, I'd also ask for unanimous consent to admit this article from the USDA.gov. USDA officials attend groundbreaking to expand high-speed internet access in rural Texas dated March 7th, 2024, Italy, Texas. Without objection to order. Thank you so with, much. With respect, so that was not the testimony. Oh, I thought you said no dollars had been spent. The largest single program. My question is, did is you not say? $42 billion. Dollars, okay. Zero houses have been connected. There are other federal programs, including Trump era ones, that right now are turning dirt and connecting. Okay, so, so just to be clear, because I don't want the American people to be confused because I was confused because it almost seemed as if, considering the fact the name of this hearing is the failed policies, as if nothing had been done. But to clarify for those that are watching, you aren't saying that no dollars have been spent as it relates to rural broadband dollars under the Infrastructure Act, correct? To be clear, for the signature effort, forty. Yes or no? Dollars. Have any dollars been spent? Not a One single dollar. person has been connected. There's that was. That's not my question, though. My question was: Have any issues? Senator Ted Cruz from Okay, Texas I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm reclaiming my time at this point. Many of these bills, I'm reclaiming my time, which means chairman, I'm going to stop my time because the witness is not. Are, are you asking him a question? Or are you? No, I'm not asking time? him a question. I reclaim my time. All right. Did you chair recognize Ms. Crockett? Okay, now I need my, I was at 41, y'all, so go back up. I will give I you nine watching. more seconds. Okay, thank you so much. Here's the deal. You've testified a lot about the problem with the broadband rollout being diversity, equity, and inclusion. You said DEI, I don't know how many times, which is one of the issues that Project 2025 takes issue with. But it's interesting to me because I have another article from the Texas Tribune, and it actually specifically states that Internet Providers say they are simultaneously hopeful and skeptical about whether the incoming federal dollars will be enough to connect the most underserved Texans. Historically, other federal rural broadband funding programs have seen limited success because many companies who committed to providing broadband went into default after radically underestimating their cost. It doesn't say anything about diversity. And the final thing that I will say Do you is know that why this election, I didn't ask you a question. The final thing that I will say is that this election is the best example of why y'all are so afraid of diversity, equity, and inclusion, because then you can't have a simple-minded, underqualified white man somehow end up ascending. Instead, you've got to pay attention to the qualified black woman that is on the other side. And with that, I will yield. Pretty much everything in Donald Trump's life is completely collapsing and spiraling out of control. You know, his legacy, his businesses, Trump stock continuously every day that's going down and down. His election chances are pretty much over now. 
Me, he basically has no chance of winning this election at this point. Watch as Jasmine Crockett tears down Trump's ego. We will see is this whining child who will sit there and won't give direct answers and honestly um, will distract and be a bumbling fool. We've seen it on the trail when he starts talking about, um, you know, wind and he starts complaining about sharks. I mean, the guy is, <laughs> is really weird. If there was one telltale sign that Trump is losing it, it's how much he talks about crowd sizes. I have 10 times, 20 times, 30 times the crowd size. And no, they never say the crowd was big. That's why I'm always saying, turn around the cameras. I'm so glad you asked it. And you said Harris's crowd sizes were AI and that there weren't people there. There's all kinds of video evidence and people who were there who have proven that false. Can you tell us about why you made that claim? Well, I can't say what was there, who was there. I can only tell you about ours. We have the biggest crowds ever in the history of politics. We have crowds that nobody's ever seen before, and uh, we continue to have that. I said, honey, I'll tell you. It was unbelievable. How good was it? It was unbelievable. The crowd, nobody's ever seen a crowd. That broke every record in New Jersey history. Nobody's ever seen a hundred, and I don't have a guitar. Don't forget, Elvis had a guitar. I don't have a guitar. I have nothing. I stand up here by myself. Terrible. Also, don't mention that he's weird because he's really struggling with those allegations. She actually called me weird. He's weird. It was just a sound bite. And she called J.D. and I weird. He's not weird. He was a great student at Yale. He went to Ohio State, graduated in two years at the top of his class and all of these different things. And, and we have this guy that's running a failed, really a very failed state who's ha had a terrible career. I mean, you have him saying they're weird. No, he's a weird guy. But we already know how this debate's going to go based on how he performed during the last debate. What will you do to help Americans right now in the throes of addiction who are struggling to get the treatment they need? To finish up, we now have the largest deficit in the history of our country under this guy. We have the largest deficit with China. He gets paid by China. He's a Manchurian candidate. He gets money from China. We have, so I think he's afraid to deal with them or something. Obviously, we're all in agreement here that the Previous debate with Biden was was garbage. I mean, I don't know. The neoliberal Twitter was a buzz with, oh, you know, he was crushing it, Biden. Uh, it, it was awful, but we couldn't see how awful it was. We couldn't see how awful Trump was because Biden was just like it's time for him to retire. Um, and you know, he was against Trump was going against such a weak candidate that he looked, you know, good. Uh, and now that he's, you know, he's flailing right now because he's actually against a very strong candidate that can campaign past 8 p.m. and, you know, and making him look like the old person. I don't know why or how anybody can support Project 2025. And I know that there was allegedly a joke about um, dictators and whether or not that's funny, but in, in the United States of America, dictatorships are never funny. And Project 2025 is giving the playbook for authoritarianism as well as the next dictator to come in. What's up everybody, Major Retire Richard Ojeda here, and Texas Representative Jasmine Crockett has been on an absolute tear this week. Not only did she smack a former lawyer of Donald Trump with a truth two by four that left the room cracking up, she also coined the term bleach blonde, bad built, butch body. Let's see, you're the executive director for the American, America First Legal, correct? That's correct. All right. And America First Legal is a member of Project 2025, which is dedicated to creating the playbook for the next conservative administration and what it calls the Project Pillars, correct? We are proud contributors to Project 2025. Okay. And uh, are you familiar with Project 2025's mandate for leadership? In fact, I am. Okay. And in fact, you wrote some of the sections of this mandate related to the DOJ, correct? Sure did. And the mandate outlines policy priorities for the next conservative president. Is that correct? It does. You've done a great job. I just want to let you know. 
quote, during a recent session of the House Judiciary Weaponization Subcommittee, Representative Jasmine Crockett sparred with Gene Hamilton, the director of America First Legal, over the contentious Project 2025. This initiative, touted by MAGA nut jobs, aims to destroy our democratic institutions and installing Trump loyalists. All right, so let's walk through some of the provisions of the mandate. It calls for eliminating the Department of Education, eliminating the Department of Commerce, deploying the military for the use of domestic law enforcement against protesters under the Insurrection Act of 1807. It also has the repealing of Schedule F status for thousands of federal employees to allow a president to replace career civil servants with unqualified partisan loyalists. That's probably my favorite of it. It also pro prohibits the FBI from combating the spread of misinformation and dis disinformation, like Russia and China who are actively trying to interfere with American elections. Crockett raised valid concerns about the project's potential ramifications, particularly its proposals to dismantle federal departments and utilize the Antiquated Insurrection Act of 1807 for domestic law enforcement purposes. Of particular note was Crockett's critique of the plan's implications for the federal workforce. The invocation of the Insurrection Act drew widespread unease, evoking concerns about civil liberties and unchecked executive power. In the heat of the battle, Texas Democrat Jasmine Crockett wielded common sense and discernment like a scalpel, slicing the MAGA arguments to bits. I'm just going to ask, we're, we're, gonna do, we're not going to play, we're going to do Miss Winebanks. Have you heard of any of these lawyers? I've got Robert Cheeley, Kenneth Chesborough. Jeffrey Clark, Matthew DePerno, John Eastman, Jenna Ellis, Michael Farino, Rudy Giuliani, Julia Hallia. I, I got a long list. Have you heard of any of these people? I have. Are you aware as to whether or not any of them have faced criminal penalties? Yes, and also been disbarred or suspended. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they've had some issues, but these, these are the hand-picked lawyers for Trump. Crockett had an exchange with former Watergate prosecutor Jill Winebanks as well, unearthing the troubling track record of attorneys handpicked by Donald Trump who had faced charges, disbarment, or suspension. I'm assuming that y'all have never been Trump lawyers, Mr. Trustee or Mr. Costello. No, I was for a year. Oh, you were? And you still have your bar card? I, I'm sorry? You still have your bar card? Yeah, well, well unless you, I get targeted for daring well, to represent well, listen, a former president. You have, you have absolutely uh, done a lot better than most uh, that deal with him, so, so good for you. During the hearing, Crockett also questioned former Trump lawyer Jim Trusty, referencing Trusty's departure and the pattern of Trump associates facing legal issues. Crockett humorously quipped, you still have your bar card? The remark drew laughter in the room and exposed the lack of credibility of lawyers representing Donald Trump. In the face of MAGA rhetoric and Trumpian dystopia, Crockett emerges as a voice of reason, championing not only the marginalized in her district, but all Americans sick and tired of the corrosive influence of extremist ideologies. Case in point, when Marge the Trainwreck Green's nasty, ignorant comments about fake eyelashes went unchecked last week, Crockett demanded accountability from Representative James Comer with a pointed question. Ms. Green, for four minutes and 21 seconds. Mr. Chair, point of order. Who's, who's? It's me. Ms. Crockett. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleached blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A, a what now? It was about the acceptability of labeling a colleague as a bleached blonde, bad built butch body. The reaction, including laughter from Jamie Raskin and others, underscored the sheer audacity of Green's behavior and the importance of holding individuals like her accountable. In a political theater full of mouthpieces for Donald Trump, Crockett's commitment to principles of decency and fairness sets her apart. Her fearlessness in confronting injustice and standing up for what is right serves as a powerful example of what a legislator is supposed to do. Fight for truth and justice and uphold the Constitution instead of making a mockery of it. In tandem with leaders like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Jasmine Crockett embodies the kind of integrity and courage that our Congress sorely needs. While figures like Marge the Trainwreck Green and Lauren Boebert peddle in misinformation and fear-mongering, Crockett and Ocasio-Cortez offer a refreshing alternative, a beacon of truth, reason, and dignity.